Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. My name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Welcome to this week's update where I tell you about the work that I've managed to get up to this week. Um, first of all, I will be in Barcelona next week because I have been invited out, kindly sponsored to go to the Penpot Fest conference. Um, I'll be giving a short talk about S SVG and um, this is my invitation if you are uh, one of my Spanish supporters uh, or especially if you're in Barcelona get in touch maybe we can meet meet up and have a drink um, but that means I should be making a video next week either either what will happen is I'll be making a video from Barcelona or I'll be doing an interview uh, we'll see how we'll see how it goes and who I can convince to be in front of my camera speaking of sponsors uh, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my regular spon sponsors who ba basically pay for most of the time that I spend on Inkscape. Um, as usual, thank you so much. Uh, if you'd like to jo join them, please see, see the links in, in the description. Okay, now into the actual meet. So I'm really excited that this this week because do you know the, the, the Shape Builder tool? Um, it, it's pretty good, but it does have some problems. And when I was uh, looking at some of the reviews for the Shape Builder tool, one of the criticisms that came up uh, over and over again was um, that you couldn't see the canvas behind the Shape Builder. When the Shape Builder was activated, you basically had only the shapes that you had selected and nothing else. And, you know, I'm not, my heart's not made of stone. I, I, I do listen to the critiques and I, I try to think about ways in which we can resolve them. Um, this particular one with, with a semi-transparent canvas, which was my ultimate game goal at the beginning of the Shape Builder refactoring, um, I've managed to actually achieve it. And I'm very happy with, with, with the results because not only is the canvas semi-transparent, the objects that you select to become invisible, which is important, and also there is a control in the toolbar for the Shape Builder that allows you to control how transparent it is. So if you liked the old way of everything being invisible, then you can choose that. And if you like to have it entirely visible and just like really in your face, you can also have that. And um, this should hopefully relieve some criticism if you're using the Shape Builder tool to basically trace objects, um, especially if you've got a raster document and you're creating basic shapes over it, and then you're trying to um, trace over, over it, uh, this is for you. Okay, so the other side of the Shape Builder in improvements that I'm excited to share is a, a way to use the Shape Builder to break apart raster images. So this is where you have a, a PNG or a JPEG or some, something imported into your SVG file, and then you use the shapes to essentially uh, uh, create many, many, many clipping re regions that you can then break apart. Uh, this could be useful for breaking apart existing designs. It might be useful for, you know, Actually, you know what, I don't even know. And it's not my job to come up with the re reasons why these tools would be useful. I just think it's cool and I think that artists will enjoy playing with it. And they're the ones who are gonna come up with the actual workflows that turn these tools into actual art. Um, but I'm excited. The bad news is, is that because these are features, uh, you won't really see them until Inkscape 1.4 which maybe Inkscape 2.0, we'll, we'll figure out the version num number later, but it could be up to a year before you actually get to see the Shape build Builder stuff, um, especially with the GTK4 refactoring, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, there's going to be a lot of um, uncertainty and possibly instability in the developer builds. Um, I always invite people who want to try the new fun functionality to... Um, essentially download the developer builds and use them. Uh, but this is fair warning that this year is going to be particularly unsta un unstable. Um, but I did want to offer something which I think not many people know, which is you can actually pay me to build for you a custom version of Inkscape with features from the future. Uh, it's probably not something that's going to be accessible to everybody. But if you if there's something that I'm building that you like really really want now and you want it to be incorporated it functionality into the 1.3 branch, it's a piece of work that you can ask me to do. With that being said, uh, everybody else is just going to have to be a bit patient or a bit uh, adventurous. So let's get on to some of the other I items in the Inkscape community. This is work that I wasn't involved with, but uh, I want to highlight because it's really cool. 
Firstly, a big shout out to Marin Hackman, who once again is 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 making sure that the 1.3 release is going to be awesome. She's just finished compiling all of the documentation for, 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 for 1.3. This includes all of the updates, key bi bindings, all of that documentation that you see on the website and that you see inside of In Inkscape. She has a material hand in making sure that that is not only updated, but is also translated. Uh, two thumbs up, awesome work, Marin. Uh, another piece of exciting fun functionality, this one is from Mykov, which is a modular grid. It's essentially a grid where each of the squares are not uh, immediately connected to each other. And so there are all of these regular gaps between each of the, each of the like punnets. Um, as soon as I saw, saw it, I was like, of course you would make a grid like, like this. It's just so obvious. Uh, but before that, I honestly saw the, the, the two versions of grids that we have in Inkscape and I was like, I can't imagine what other kinds of grids are possible. Um, but just goes to show you can show you, you never can tell what fun functionality is in, in, in the future. Uh, this is, will also be in 1.4, 1, 1. so there's a long wait to, to get this feature as well. Um, Tav has been making massive in, inroads into G, GTK4. Um, amazing work, uh, but it's going to be a long road, mostly event stuff, um, widget stuff, trying to figure out right clicks and context menus and other stuff that has been removed from G, GTK4 that needs to be entirely recreated and replaced. Uh, nice work, Tav. PBS has also been wor working on event stuff and refactoring, making sure that the code is even cleaner and even better. It's exciting to, to see every time he, he submits a merge request because you know it's always going to have improved the code base. Um, okay, so that's it for this week. I will be obviously flying out to Bar Barcelona, um, doing a video for from there, and then I'll be back. If you don't see me next week, uh, either the world ended or hopefully I w just skip, skipped a week because of uh, travel and it just became too, too much. Um, but in case I don't see, see you, please have a great week. And um, thank you for watching.